Well, the goal was to send a united message. This is a collection of sending countries that helped support South Korea's war effort of the 1950s against the North. Uh, Rex Tillerson, uh, who's attending here, the Secretary of State, Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson from the UK said uh, this is a natural uh, place of interest for these countries uh, to have a say in what's happening in the Korean Peninsula. But we saw a difference, a disparity in the tone between some of the participants here. We saw that very early in the opening remarks about eight hours ago, and we may see some of that in the closing remarks in the next half hour. Let's have a listen to some of those uh, comments. We seek neither a regime change nor a collapse. We are working to resolve this crisis and are aiming for what is in our collective best interests. We stand ready to provide a brighter future for North Korea if it makes the right choice. And we should not be naive about their intent nor should we be blinded by North Korea's charm offensive. The pressure campaign will continue until North Korea takes decisive steps to denuclearize. And indeed, the U.S. has been pushing the toughest line here among the representatives. And indeed, uh, it has been leading this so-called pressure campaign. Japan also pushing a very hard line. And what we expect, what we understand will happen following this conference close is that the U.S. will meet separately first with the Japanese and South Korean foreign ministers and then a separate one-on-one -on -one dinner uh, with the Japanese. Both of these added uh, to Rex Tillerson's schedule. Of course, there was lots of criticism about who is missing here, notably Russia and China not attending. And some of these countries stated, including Boris Johnson, specifically stated that China is the main actor here, but he would not comment on whether they should have been here. Norway officials from China and Russia are not taking part in this meeting. What has been their response? Well, we heard from uh, the Russian uh, side, uh, Moscow, saying that this meeting is destructive. And on Tuesday, the foreign ministry spokesman going even further, uh, saying that he doubts it will be productive and he hopes at least it won't be counterproductive. So some very strong words from Moscow and a similar tone coming from Beijing. Beijing for the last week echoed again on Tuesday. Let's have a listen to the Chinese foreign ministry spokesman. The most important parties involved in the Korean Peninsula nuclear issue aren't taking part in the meeting. We don't know what the goal of this meeting is, so I don't think this meeting is legal or representative. From the very beginning, China has been opposed to this meeting. Of course, both countries border the DPRK. Both countries have veto power on the United Nations Security Council. Both countries favor the six-party talks as the approach to dialogue with the DPRK. And both countries, as we've mentioned, not attending.